It's like, why are you being so narrow-minded? You know what I mean? I personally think that this is the best runway she's done all season. Now, the issue I have with it is that it is feeling a little bit meh. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Y'all, before we get started, I just want to announce I've got merch. That is right. You can now be sporting your own Neon Noir t-shirts and hoodies right at the link below. But enough about that. Let's get into this episode. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race Belgique season two, episode seven, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to watch all the way to the end where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. This week's runway theme is a family history where the queens must make over a friend or family member into a drag queen, but not only any drag queen, their daughter. That is right, we are giving you mother-daughter family resemblance drag fantasy on the runways. So without further ado, let's find out which of these queens shined bright and which ones faded into obscurity. First up, it's Lulu Velvet, and Lulu Velvet is coming out with her best friend, Nana Velvet. They are decided to do this black and white uh, realness, wearing these big flowy ponchos, one with a star on her head and one with a moon on their head. They are definitely giving you contrast, but they are also giving you that sisterly vibe. Now, Lulu Velvet said that she is channeling 1945 cabaret, sort of a la Siegfried Folie. Now, I don't know this reference, so it's a little hard for me to get into her knowledge, but I love that she is referencing something and she is definitely into her culture of the cabaret lifestyle. So that is super cute. But let's get into these looks. First up, I like that they are different. When we do family resemblance, sometimes people tend to do twins. And I think that that's a little bit of a cop out. I do want them to be family resemblance, but I do want them to be slightly different. So I do like that she went with this star and moon fantasy. It's definitely giving you concept and it's definitely giving you different, but definitely feeling like they are together as a pair. Now, the issue I have with it is that it is feeling a little bit meh. And let me explain. First up is the headpiece. I love the star and the moon idea, but it literally feels like a piece of cardboard that's been cut out and put stones on it. It doesn't feel elevated in any specific way. It's really missing something extra. Now we get into the garment. She's decided to pair it with these flowy ponchos. Now, the reason she probably did this is she didn't know who she was gonna get as a makeover partner, and she was afraid that that person was gonna be a different size, so this kind of fits any size and any person you're gonna get, which is a really smart strategy. However, the issue is that it looks really plain. It really is just a bunch of fabric that is flowing, and at this level on Drag Race, we do need a little bit more. What I think could have really helped is if she wanted to stick with this silhouette, is added a piece of fabric on top that had a bunch of rhinestones, like a little bit of a mesh on it, to really elevate it and give you a little va 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 voom extra. The other issue I have with these outfits is that they are all white and all black from head to toe, with the exception of the face. The face is the only one that is skin tone, and I feel like it ruins the character. Now, maybe this is referential to her original idea, but to me, I felt like this should have been all painted in one color. And if people say the reason why she didn't go with black is because she didn't want to do blackface. Now, I personally don't think it would have been blackface because she wasn't imitating a culture and she was definitely giving you a concept. But if she feared that as a problem, then instead of going with black and white, she could have went with like midnight blue and white and still giving you the same concept, but done in a different way. Although I think the transformation was very well done and a, making a woman look like a drag queen sometimes can be actually tricky because you don't want them to look like a beautiful woman. So I think that Lulu Velvet definitely made it work. That being said, it is not my favorite. I think it's not enough, especially for this late into the competition. All in all, it's not there for me. And that is why I'm going to go ahead and give her a drab. 
Next up, it's Laverve and her biological brother, Lachfaline. Laverve decided that she was going to take the mother-daughter theme literally and literally gave you a mother and a daughter. She is definitely giving you the matronly widow vibes with this dark blue dress and this sort of veil and her signature beard. Her daughter is giving you more of like this little schoolgirl in the same fabric but in a shorter silhouette with a puffier hair and just a little beard to kind of say that she is the younger daughter. Now, like I said, I love when people don't do matchy matchy and she didn't do matchy matchy. It is definitely giving you mother daughter. I like that they are both having the same fabric. It is definitely reading on the runway. And the makeup looks like they are siblings. And considering that they are different sizes, this works really well. Now, I will say that the one part that I kind of didn't really enjoy is that she made uh, her brother shave off his beard. She is a bearded queen, so actually the uh, daughter could have had a beard as well. And I think that having a beard would have actually connected them a little bit more. I know she was trying to say, oh, small beard, big beard. But considering your person already had a beard, I think you should have just played it up. That being said, that's the only really comment I have for Lover, I personally think that this is the best runway she's done all season. And I'm really excited to see Lover really come to the final four with a strong entry. All in all, this is pretty excellent. And that is why she is getting a fab. Next up, it's Alvita and her boyfriend, Gurita. They decided to come out in these pirate inspired outfits. Alvida says that Alvida, the original Alvida, is actually somebody from like, I don't know, a long time ago who used to be a pirate. So she channeled that and gave you this pirate inspired outfit. But she decided to make it a little bit fashion by putting in that Galliano twist onto it. She decided to pair this outfit with this big wig that's got like these three horn vibes. Now, first off, I will say I love this outfit. It is the one that feels the most fashion on the runway. It is definitely taking in this pirate theme but not making it costumey and making it much more like fashion and runway she said that it was giving galliano i don't know galliano that well i got a little bit of vivian westwood but either way it is definitely fashion the other thing that i really love is that i personally think that alvida did the best makeup i find that her boyfriend and her looked quite different so she definitely had to do some work and the mug were stamped that is impressive now does it give mother-daughter? No, it definitely gives sisters to me. They're almost a little bit too similar to each other to be considered mother-daughter. It is definitely more siblings. Now, on any other season of Drag Race, they always want you to do siblings. So I can understand why Alvida came with this in mind and this prepared. We've seen it time and time again that they're like, it's not matchy enough, it's not matchy enough. And I always come out on these episodes and say, I don't want it to be matchy matchy, but she did matchy matchy and she did it well. And that's the thing. Personally, I don't care if it was mother daughter and it was sibling, but what I do care about was that I wish there was a little bit more difference between them. Maybe one of them had a short skirt, one, maybe one of them had pants, maybe then one of them had a jacket. I know, just give me a little bit of that extra element to make it really feel slightly different apart. Right now, the only thing that's really setting them apart is the hair. Now, if you do look closely, the garments are different. I'm not saying that they're not, but the vibe is too, too similar. And that's what I'm trying to get at. All that being said, she looks fabulous and her partner looks fabulous. And I can't fault when somebody does a really good job, even though I would have liked them to be further apart. And overall, I disagree with the judges that this had to be mother-daughter. It's like, why are you being so narrow-minded? You know what I mean? All in all, I think this is well done. And that is why she's still gonna get a bum. Next up is Gabbana and her best friend Dulce. They are coming out in these black and white polka dot looks. One that is giving you more femme and the other one that's giving you more mask. She says that they are both rats that are coming to chase after the cat and are going to kill it. I personally love the weirdness of this look, but I like weird things. In the workroom, she said that she was playing off of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, but like making it really strange and creepy. And I'm like, okay, cool, I see that. It's definitely giving you this rat fantasy, but the garments themselves are pretty fashion. So it's kind of got this like juxtaposition overall. Now, 
Is it reading father, daughter? No, to me it is reading like couple going to do some murder. It's also giving you a little bit more club kid, a little bit more gruesome, which there is such a drag scene for this like weird craziness that we don't get to see that much on Drag Race because the Drag Race audience generally likes much more of this like pretty, pretty drag. So I love that this is sort of getting exposed. The only thing I have is that it is feeling a little bit costumey. Now, I personally don't mind a little costumey, but I say that only because of the fur and the male aesthetic. Uh, had these been two female characters, I think I would have preferred it more. All in all, I love the weirdness of it. I love the overall aesthetic. I love the garment and it is definitely feeling new, fresh, and original. And that is why for Miss Gabbana, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a bug. <laughs> With four queens left, that is it for this runway. Personally, I think this was a very successful runway. I love all the different interpretations. I love the way the queens went. I almost wish that this runway had actually been a little bit earlier in the season because I would have loved to see what someone like Mokfe or uh, Chloe Clark would have done. But enough about that. Uh, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to Lulu Velvet. Oh. I don't think this was that much of a surprise. She was the only one that I drabbed this week. I don't think that she was particularly bad, but I think comparison to everyone else, she was definitely the least sparkly, let's say. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week is gonna go to LaVerve. Yeah. I think LaVerve did an amazing transformation. I think that they definitely look like a pair, but they definitely look like individuals. And this definitely felt overall elevated for LaVerve. All in all, pretty well done. And I'm happy that she actually got one of my fabs of the week for the first time this season. She's coming in straight at the end and really raking it in. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next episodes. Bye.